Hey guys, we're here with the brand new Capo 1.8 scale Jeep Wrangler project. Now, this is an ultra realistic, super high detail, brand new kit that has just been released. Now, the biggest thing people are noticing about this before even all of the insane detail in this kit is the price tag. This thing's got a price tag of $2,400. Now, this is by far the most expensive box stock kit that I've ever had here in the shop. Now, a lot of our vehicles can get really high price tags on them if you start adding up all of those individual parts and pieces we put into a truck to make it as bomb proof or as scale as we do in the end. But to lay out $2,400 right away, for this kit is definitely a little bit of a sticker shock for most people that hear about this kit. Now, again, it is insanely high detail. I've opened up the kit, taken a look at the parts and pieces in there, and they are very impressive, but we do need to get in there, start assembling it, and see exactly how all those parts work together, fit together, and how we think the durability will be. Like I said, it's an insanely high detail truck. So with that comes a few other things high detail, high scale things, means that you're probably gonna have to drive it slightly more scale. When we oversize our components and things like that, like I do on a Wraith or a Yeti or something like that, then you can start throwing them around, jumping them high and putting huge power to those things. This kit, I do not expect that to be the case. I think this is going to be something that you're going to need to adjust your driving style to make your uh, experience be a more realistic one because just by the look of this car so far, I think that that is going to be the case with some of the components. But we're going to get into it, start looking at those things, and see exactly how that is in the end. Now, I don't have a feel yet for how long this build is going to take, so I am going to break this up into multiple videos uh, on segments of the vehicle as I go. Today, we're going to crack open the manual here and start getting into the very first part of this build, which looks like it's going to be that motor transmission transfer case setup that is kind of the heart of this vehicle. So that's what I'm going to start on. Uh, the directions on here look interesting. Uh, I think that we're going to rely mostly on the schematic drawings and less on the uh, written directions as they uh, the translation on them can be a little bit sketchy it looks like. Again, I haven't got fully into this yet, but just doing a cursory look at it. So we're going to get into there. This transmission is a three-speed transmission with a two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive selector as well. So we're definitely looking at a lot of options. In the end, this thing has a lot of servos controlling a lot of different things. So radio choice, all of those different things, all of that's gonna come. I'm going to just kind of take my time and step through this build, seeing and looking at every single component of it. We will get into the gear ratios, all of that motor selection. Uh, we're gonna get pretty technical into this because I think that this kit deserves uh, to have that technical look at something uh, with some real information put out about it. So with that said, let's crack open this box and uh, start getting into this transmission motor and transfer case setup. After taking a brief look at the instructions, I've cracked into the kit and grabbed what parts I think could probably be associated with the buildup of this uh, transmission transfer case front engine assembly. Like I said, these directions, not the best thing. Right out of the box, I can tell that it's going to be a little bit of a struggle and a patience game to make sure that I pick the right parts and pieces out of here. Probably gonna be a little bit of hunting around as we go. To get into some of the parts that are already pretty exciting looking, just to show you guys what we're gonna be dealing with. This has the front engine that's going to be uh, under the hood like you would expect. And this is just the, call it the block assembly. It's three pieces, a rear, a center, and a front there. This will house the motor to actually hide it. The transmission assembly will actually be housed in a full uh, realistic looking transmission kind of uh, done in a black chrome I would call it which will mount to the back of the block just like you would expect it's got an oil pan for the transmission as well as a uh, tail shaft housing and then a two-piece transfer case housing 
So we'll get, we'll get into each of these pieces and things like that as we go. I'm not gonna do a how-to on how this thing all goes together, but I do wanna show you kind of some highlights from some of the individual parts and pieces as we go. So I'm a pretty good ways into the actual build of the transmission now. I've got the major portion of the transmission gears assembled here. There is one, two, three, four gears inside of the transmission. Uh, one is actually a double gear. And then there's three shift forks as well as shift cogs uh, that all will engage the independent three speeds. Now, it also has a three gear transfer case on the back. And like I said, this is also has a two wheel drive and four wheel drive setup. So the shift fork for the four wheel drive, two wheel drive setup lays in the back half of this transfer case. Now that I've got everything set up, I've mocked it up once in place, had to come back, make sure that all of my bearings were seated well so that when I tightened up this transfer case, everything seated perfectly. When it was all cinched down, everything still spun freely. Uh, the very first attempt at that, things weren't going quite as well. The bearings are a pretty tight fit onto the shafts. I am having to tap them on slightly to make sure that everything seats perfectly. Um, so other than that, that's really the only fit issue that I've seen so far, other than uh, one E-clip being too loose to uh, hold tightly on that shaft. Other than that, everything else is going uh, together pretty well at this time. I am making sure to use thread lock on every single piece of uh, hardware that I'm putting on this. And so far, the materials seem like they're holding uh, threads pretty well. So far, all of the screws have been an M2. So that can get pretty tiny, and sometimes you can get a little bit nervous about how those threads will hold. But so far, so good. Uh, I'm going to continue with this build and get this transmission uh, completely assembled. So we've completed the actual assembly of the transmission here. The only thing left to do is put the final pan cover on the bottom, and then this whole unit will be sealed up. Now, right now I've got a temporary motor in there. This is a Holmes Crawlmaster motor. I think I'll likely go with a brushed motor with a very high amount of torque, but not necessarily a ton of speed for this car. I do believe that it's going to be pretty heavy based on just the beginning of this kit so far and the weight of that box. I will say that there is no way to properly adjust the mesh of the pinion gear onto the spur gear though. You have to just kind of set it, put it in there and hope that it works. There's no access panel to that. You can't see how it's meshing. The pinion gear is completely hidden up on the very top of the bell housing of the transmission. And right, it's actually just a total guess. Something else is that you are using a brass pinion gear that's included with this onto the hardened steel gears of the transmission. Now, the transmission gears so far, I think they're gonna be plenty beefy. They feel really good and all of that. One thing is, is that they are a spiral cut. So the gears kind of have a twist to them as you uh, look down on them. They're not a straight cut gear. Now, there's a problem there though because they supply a brass pinion gear for the motor. Now, a brass gear on a hardened steel gear. The brass is going to wear. Brass is almost always going to be the one that wears because it's a soft metal. Now, hopefully that brass is soft enough that it gives a little bit, but that brass gear is absolutely going to wear out at some point soon. So that is one thing that I've noticed. Other than that, though, the, the assembly of everything so far is going pretty well. Uh, I want to continue on this motor setup here, get everything going, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit more. So we finished up the assembly of the motor transmission and transfer case. Now, I have not installed the three servos that are housed inside of this block. So I will have to disassemble this again and then install those servos. Now, right now, I just wanna get everything put together initially. Uh, it's gonna take some rework to take things apart, put things where they are, but I wanted to get a good feel of exactly how this thing went together and uh, before I made the final decision on what electronics packages I was gonna run, specifically the motor and ESC. Since then I have kind of decided now what I would like to use and at that point I could stop, but uh, I think like many of you, I'm probably uh, a little bit too impatient to have something this nice sitting here and not want to put it together. So I want to uh, go through, make sure that I see everything about the kit. So far, I had, uh, had two issues. One is that I was missing one small brass bushing. Right now, I have not found a situation to rectify that, so I do not have the bushing that 
uh, goes on the pivot portion of the belt tensioner of the front pulley system. So I will have to figure out something for that. Uh, I don't know that it's going to be worth trying to get something from Capo uh, to replace that or if I will make something on my own uh, or something like that. So I will cross that bridge. Uh, the other thing was a simple uh, 10 millimeter set screw missing. I had ones that were longer and shorter, uh, but nothing that was specifically for the length that they called out in the package. Uh, actually, I had one other issue as well. They've got these aluminum uh, spark plugs basically that uh, they go on the side here and that's what holds this uh, valve cover on. Now these are made of aluminum and as you can guess aluminum is somewhat soft. Now I had an issue with one of them on the back side of the left bank here. Now the threads on it were not perfect initially. I couldn't get it to start. So I took it out and uh, ran it down on a two millimeter nut to try and clean up the threads the best I could. As I was uh, then threading it in, it did start to thread fine, and then all of a sudden it pulled off on me. So uh, now I do not have the eighth spark plug uh, that is uh, required for that. So that is something that I may also make a replacement for on my own, uh, but we'll see exactly how that goes. Now there's one other design thing that I really want to touch on, and that is this rear disc brake assembly here. Now. This disc brake assembly is keyed into the output shaft that runs straight through the transmission. Now, when I was originally seeing it, I hadn't looked very close at it, uh, and, but I was already slightly skeptical about the use of a disc brake on an electric vehicle. As I get further and further into it, uh, I do not see the purpose of using this disc brake whatsoever. Now, the reason is, is because our motor and ESC package will have a drag brake. I think the drag brake will be much better uh, as far as functionality goes than a disc brake would because with a disc brake you run into other issues as far as uh, programming and things like that as far as reverse goes or something like that. It's not like a nitro car or it is similar to a nitro car in the fact that uh, normally you have a brake or a reverse servo that's actually required to use reverse rather than a simple electric motor and drag brake setup. So. Um, I'm going to adjust this disc brake setup in a way that it becomes ineffective. I do not see the point on using it, and uh, in the end, I do not think you would see any benefit out of that. This transfer case does have the two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive setup. Now, this small little nub here on top of the transfer case is how that's activated, and I am surprised at how smooth it is. So. Uh, we will see how it performs once it's under load and such. So that's where we're at so far with this build. Total build time to assemble this motor and transmission uh, is going on four plus hours, four to five hours uh, for this build here. I was taking my time trying to go through as, uh, as carefully as I could while deciphering the uh, medium quality uh, instructions. But so far, other than the issues I've mentioned, uh, nothing major and uh, pretty pleased with the kit so far, but we've got a lot of kit left to go with a lot of detailed pieces and really looking forward to seeing how the fit and finish of the rest of the kit comes together. But with that and with the very first part of this build done, we will see you guys on the next one.